the next threat is that comes from this loss of ice, which I think is the worst one, or, or potentially the worst, is the threat from offshore methane. Um, I say it in words here, so I'll, but I'll go straight through into the pictures. Um, and that comes about because the, if you look at the Arctic Ocean, it's very, um, it's, a, it's an ocean, it, but it's an ocean that's different from others. Most, most oceans are four to 5,000 meters deep. And the Arctic is in the middle, that's uh, the central Arctic basin is four to 5,000 meters. But the Arctic also has the widest continental shelves of any uh, part of the world. And we can see the Barents Sea, the Kara Sea, the Laptev Sea, and the East Siberian Sea. All these seas north of Russia are very wide and they're very shallow. They're only 50 to 100 meters deep. So really there's a very, very steep cliff at the edge of this shallow water going down from 50 meters to 4,000 meters. So a 12,000 foot high cliff runs all the way around the edge of the Arctic. Uh, now, as the ice retreats in summer, it's still there in the center of the Arctic Ocean. It hasn't, we haven't had an ice-free September yet, but we do regularly get a summer in which the ice retreats from all these shelf seas. So these seas, which used to be ice covered even in summer, are now ice-free in summer for three, four months in a year. So that has lots of consequences. One, one is that you can run ships uh, across from Europe to uh, Japan through the northern sea route and not hit ice. Uh, but the other one is that this water warms up um, because you've got 50 to 100 meters of water depth. You've got a lot of radiation, 24 hours a day of sunshine in, uh, in summer, um, uh, 20, or daylight anyway. And uh, the water warms up. Uh, you haven't got any sea ice to protect the ocean from, from warming. So you can get temperatures which are quite high. Uh, and when I was up there recently, we found temperatures of 11 degrees in one, at one spot. And that, that's, that's really warm. That's like temperatures that you swim in, in off Britain, <laughs> in the North Sea. Uh, and I'll try and try and get it to, uh, here we are. Um, this is uh, some, some data from satellites, and this is from 2007. Uh, the, the blue line is where the ice edge was in 2007, in, in September, and the, the, the colors are surface water temperatures, and we can see that uh, there's some water that was more than five degrees, that's the brown stuff there, and a lot of water was more than three degrees. So that water would have been less than zero degrees in a normal winter. But in the last few years, as the ice has retreated, it's warmed up. So one consequence of sea ice retreat in summer is warming of the coastal seas. And the warming of the coastal seas is a pretty serious problem because um, at the, on the seabed, you have this layer of permafrost, which has been around since the last ice age, and that sits on top of several hundred meters of sediment, which are full of methane. So the methane would like to come out, as, but there's a pressure. The pressure of the permafrost on top stops the methane from escaping. So it's like a, it's like a, um, a pressure cooker, and um, once the me once the surface permafrost melts, the methane can come out, out of the seabed, bubble up to the surface and get out into the atmosphere and cause uh, a rapid and sudden global warming. So we've got data now from, from buoys that we, that we install near the seabed and show this warming happening. The temperatures on the seabed reach 3 degrees C. Um, and then we... Uh, um, sorry for the delays, it seems to take a while. He, okay, he, here's the stuff um, that, that is the, the causing the damage, the, 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 evil, the evil stuff here is, is a me, methane hydrates. The methane that's under the, under the sediments that's being held back from coming out is actually not in the form of a gas, 
it's in the form of a solid material in which is actually ice but the ice has a different structure it's like a kind of cage so you have ice, ice molecules forming a cage and the holes in the cage contain methane molecules so that thing you see there that looks like a, a piece of ice is actually a piece of ice plus methane the methane is 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 contained within the structure of the ice so this uh, this was dredged up uh, the thing about it is it's it's called it's really ice which burns and there's some very nice pictures i didn't take one myself but if you if you put a uh, if you put a, a, a flame against this it burns there's enough methane in that piece of ice to cause it to burn so you've got a, a lump of ice which is burning which looks pretty eerie anyway that's that's where the methane is it's in these the form of these methane hydrates and um, and it's already happening that um, in places the the seabed has melted the permafrost has thawed and methane's coming off so this is a picture taken in the East Siberian Sea by sonar we're looking out from from uh, a vehicle an underwater vehicle which is uh, pinging on sideways and each of these is a plume of methane coming away from the seabed so the seabed's 60 to 70 meters down and each of these is is a, a plume of methane gas coming out from the seabed and altogether that plume is about a kilometer across and it's it's bubbling up so if you if you're on the surface with a ship you have to be really careful not to have any naked flames because otherwise you could have an explosion but this is pretty frightening it never used to happen because in summer there wasn't any open water and and so the, the fact there was an ice cover there kept the water cold and you didn't have any methane being emitted but now you do and every year there's more methane being emitted more and more bubble plumes coming out and that methane reaches the surface comes out into the atmosphere and causes global warming and this is some a photo taken from that vehicle of methane bubbles coming up and you can see how intense that plume is and um, oops um, okay okay and then this is the uh, when there was there's was some, some ice drifted in and here the methane bubbles are flattening themselves against the ice on the top so you've got flattened bubbles um, then you can see the the fact that there's more methane in the atmosphere from satellites because there are instruments on on satellites which can measure methane concentration and uh, here uh, as a colleague of ours uh, in at university of maryland who who, who works on this and the left-hand picture is uh, methane concentrations in the atmosphere in 2008 and the right-hand picture is 2011 because the right-hand picture's got more red in it <laughs> and I should have shown the scale so it doesn't but it does mean there's more methane in the Arctic atmosphere in 2011 because there's more of these plumes coming up so that's really pretty worrying um, and it seems to okay here's another one of methane this is looking from the ship and there's a very thin ice cover which you can't really see but it's still enough for the methane bubbles to flatten themselves against the ice before they break through so you see these flat mushroom shaped things which are methane bubbles sitting underneath a transparent ice cover <coughs> 